please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. This is Bazaar Morning Call. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me are Anuj and Sonia. Yes, uh, it is that 3% uh, that uh, all of us have been drum beating for the past several uh, days. And yesterday, all of CNBC was dominated by that number. But as one gentleman uh, correctly pointed out, the skies didn't fall. Uh, nevertheless, we have to take this very seriously because it represents the cost of money, the most important uh, benchmark of the risk-free money. Uh, that cost has gone to 3%. The last time it was as high as 3% was 2014. And the last time uh, it was a little more expensive at 3.04%, it was 2011. So clearly, uh, for seven years, we have not got used to this level of the cost of money. A lot of assets have been purchased and have gotten inflated because money was cheap. Now that money is not as cheap, which are the assets that will become dearer? Which are the assets that may see a sell-off? We do not know. That is exactly what the world will try to find out. So that could keep equity markets, uh, uh, the equity bulls a little jittery. For one day at least, you want to wait and see how this uh, much-awaited 3% number is going to have an implication. Nobody will take seriously uh, big long bets uh, uh, for want of uh, some worry as to you know how this might move. The positive for India is that crude has now gone off a little bit from that $75 mark. As well, dollar index has moved a little lower from that 91 number that it touched yesterday. Uh, those are the positives for India, but we've got to wait and see. My sense is that 10,630 or 10,640 will be a formidable resistance for probably one more day. Morning, both of you. Hi, good morning. You were talking about the positives and I think that would make sense because, you know, our markets have been sort of looking up for the last few days. And yesterday we saw quite a bit of delivery-based buying in the large cap names, whether it's ICICI Bank, HDFC, Reliance Industries. There was 300, 400 crores of delivery-based buying. So I guess these are the large caps that are at least holding the markets up. Uh, Anuj, morning. That 10,600 level uh, mm. has been uh, conquered, at least for now. Mm. Uh, do you think it's something that could hold or given the weak global setup, it could prove a bit of a challenge? Uh, morning, Sonia. You know, first of all, I don't know whether you know life changes at 3.007% uh, compared to 2.99%. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's not as if from 2.8 we went to 3. It was there. So uh, the market knew it. It will happen. Just like market knew crude would go to 75, whether it was at 74.7 or 74.8. Short point, just look at the market texture for the last three or four days. Uh, April 19, 20 and 23 was really interesting because the market opened. Uh, and, and close at same level. You know the term we use, doji in technical terms. Uh, 10,564, 565 close. 560, 564. 593, 585. Yesterday, you saw that, you know, the open was 578 and finally we gained some traction and closed at 10,614. So intraday for last two days, the high has been 10,638. Mm -hmm. uh, my sense is the day to take out that is actually today. Because today what will happen is, uh, today you will have, uh, you know, if the SGX Nifty is right, which it hasn't been for last three or four days, today if the market opens gap down, in that case it will, or, and you know the 500 point Dow down, a lot of people might, you know, be tempted to take shots in the first hour of trade. They may not get follow through and after that uh, they may get trapped and in the second half we might see covering. So the way to play this market today is to observe the first hour low and see at what point does it reverse. Uh, and when it reverses from there, that becomes your sacrosanct stop and you try a long trade because this is a buy on dips market and you have to respect the market's texture. Market's texture has been, so much bad news has been thrown at it. Maybe one more news, the market will take it and it will move on. The only point is Bank Nifty showing some signs of fatigue at higher level. Even yesterday from intraday uh, rally, it uh, sort of cooled off a bit. So the Nifty might be a better bet than Bank Nifty. And on that, I think uh, your point that, you know, the delivery buying in Larson, HDFC, Reliance has started a fresh move. Also, IT is corrected for two days. That still remains the leading sector. So that may make a bit of a comeback, especially if rupee sees more decline. Uh, so uh, my sense is the market has unfinished business somewhere around 10,700 for April series. Uh, May will be extremely volatile. I think May might be the month where you see the correction perhaps coming back after a big April rally. But today's gap down, I think... Uh, should not be you should not be shorting it you should be seeing where it reverses and i think that will present a good buying opportunity and again you know my, uh, my sense is today would be again a day where you focus on a lot of 
individual stock, you'll make a lot of money. Yesterday, for example, stupendous earnings from ICIC approved. We kept talking about it through closing bell. Yes. Uh, so, you know, st uh, we saw before that Chola Mandalam, earnings are good. So, that should keep markets in good stead. Actually, you, know, you made that point about earnings. It's important from the US market's perspective as well because yesterday, Caterpillar fell about 6% and mm. Caterpillar is generally the barometer of economic health in the US and that was one of the reasons why the US markets fell. Mm. So, it may not necessarily be, be because of the way bond exactly. deals moved. Uh, earnings there are a bit under pressure as yeah, well. Yeah, it was just that a very good earnings uh, resulted in profit taking. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I think the point is well taken that we are in a growth mood, mm. uh, whether whether it's globally or whether it's India, yeah. uh, this se earning season uh, has been extremely rewarding and extremely uh, uh, proving the point that uh, growth is back and uh, therefore the mojo of the markets cannot be lost. Uh, and yeah, the markets may well take the view that we have seen 2.99 for what two weeks now. Mm. So uh, what's the big deal about three and may uh, go ahead and proceed. We really will have to see whether it's another day of tussle or today is the day when you move towards 10,700. Okay, well, we'll get a lot of big uh, investors and equity market experts to tell us what they've made of the move in the bond markets in the US. But for now, let's also tell you uh, what our wise men and women have to say this morning. Sanjeev Prasad of Kotak uh, Institutional Equity says the recent sharp depreciation in the Indian currency versus the US dollar and the continued high commodity prices will support FY19 earnings, even as India's macro position has deteriorated with likely higher current account deficit and weaker balance of payments as well as a higher imported inflation. Sanjeev adds that bond deals have rebounded with India's weakening macros and the INR has depreciated meaningfully. The equity market trudges along nicely, detached from the macro troubles of the real economy. India model portfolio Kotak has added ICICI Pru and trimmed positions in Max Financial Services and ICICI Bank to fund the same. They have also added Marico and funded the same through SBI and Tata Motors. Well, incidentally, uh, uh, he's pointing out about the uh, uh, worsening macros yesterday. The, despite global yields rising, Indian yields fell. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were rumors that uh, probably RBI bought uh, bonds, uh, but clearly foreign funds uh, were buyers. So that is a very important positive, actually, uh, for the markets, both NBFCs as well as banks. Okay, we uh, therefore get to the fixed income market. Uh, first, the rupee. Prime Robert of Veracity says the rupee will continue to depreciate further today on the back of higher crude prices and a strong dollar. He expects to see a trading range of 66 to 66.50 against the dollar. On bonds, Dawal Dalal of Edelweiss says the government bond yield curve has continued to flatten with yields of two to three year bonds inching up while yields of 10 year bonds trending lower. This is even while yields of 10 year US Treasury are looking firm and testing their 2014 high of 3%. Double adds that the Indian overnight index swaps curve is also factoring in two to three rate hikes down the line. They are closely watching the trajectory of crude oil and rupee for the queues. Dawal uh, says they find the value at the short end with forward curve looking attractive. The prospects of uh, rate hikes expects the yield of the 10-year bond yield to trade between 7.6 to 7.7. .7. Okay, big decline, of course, in the US market. We've been talking about it. Here's Mangalam with the world view. Well, the big decline started from uh, the bond uh, bond street. The US 10 year finally hit that 3% mark that we've been talking about, the highest since Jan 2014. As a result of that, we saw a correction on the Dow. The Dow opened about 130 points higher, and from there, we saw a decline of close to 750 points, closing lower by about 425 odd points. The key drag on Dow was Caterpillar, the big index heavyweight, down about 6.2%. They reported strong numbers, but the guidance was weak. The management said that the first quarter was perhaps the best that they've seen in 2019. And then it was, of course, the FANG stocks which led the NASDAQ down. So Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, as well as Google Parent, Alphabet, all of them lower in excess of 3.5%. European markets, too, ended by and large mix, so no big cues coming in from any of these European indices. Weakness from the Wall Street actually continues into the Asian markets, so the Japanese index down by close to about nine tenths of a percent, the Hang Seng too down almost a percent. Uh, but the Japanese index is lower despite weaker yen. SGX Nifty indicating a slightly lower start to the tune of 50 points on the back foot. 
Okay. okay, and this is, thank you very much for that. Uh, Global Q is important today, of course. Uh, and I, I wouldn't worry too much about the SGX 50 starting lower. Uh, I think the market is thinning over there and is not very reflective. But uh, I think we're getting news that uh, Bharti Intertel is merging uh, Indus Towers with itself. The board has approved the merger. It's the Bharti Airtel board. Now, uh, this is uh, a bit of a complicated merger because Bharti Intertel already owns about, uh, I think, 42% in uh, uh, Indus Towers. So there is a bit of common ownership already. Mm. And uh, this merger, of course, was long expected. I think Nisha has, uh, uh, you know, looked at this deal every yes. inch and every centimeter of the way. We there should have her shortly. Sure, there are more details coming in on the exchanges, though. The merger ratio is uh, 1565 shares of Bharti Infratel for every one Indus Tower shares. That's the merger ratio. The transaction values Indus Towers at an enterprise value of 715 billion rupees. So that's almost 10.8 billion dollars. But let's go across to Nisha now. Nisha, this merger has come through. They've, in fact, put it on the exchanges. Um, tell us more on that. That's right, Sonia. We had reported a few days back that this merger is in final stages and it's in the interest of all the parties concerned here. And there are three big players of fighting the competition in the telecom space. So IDEA, Vodafone, Bharti, Airtel, all of them have come together to really make this merger happen. Now remember, the earlier plan had got changed with KKR really buying out in the towers. But uh, you cannot rule out the fact that KKR, in due course of time, will also invest more into this company. I don't know if the press release, I'm just going through that, but uh, if it mentions, but Bharti and Vodafone, uh, are they supposed to be the joint promoters of the company as well? Those are the critical details we need to see. Idea uh, could be gaining over a billion dollars by way of selling its 11.15% stake in the company as well. So that's going to be a boost for Idea Cellular, which post-merger with Vodafone is going to start off the company with over 1 lakh crore rupees of debt on its books. So that's going to be an important development as well. So it's in the interest of all the three companies and um, both Bharti Airtel as well as the Idea Cellular are supposed to be perking up in trades today and we'll get some more details as and when more details. The details the out on the re in the release, uh, Nisha, so let me read it out to you. Idea has the option to either sell its 11% shareholding in Indus Towers or, uh, you know, if, and that, uh, the amount of this would be about 65 billion rupees, so that's 1 billion dollars, or alternatively receive new shares in the combined company based on the merger ratio. Okay. So that's one thing that they have mentioned, Lata. Okay, actually, uh, uh, Nisha, will do one thing. We'll allow you to read that uh, release. This is a long-awaited merger and it is anyway 1,565 exactly. shares of Bharti Infratel yeah. for one industry. So it's not a major uh, uh, equity dilution. Exactly. And I tell you one thing, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's a news which the market had priced in. Mm. Uh, you know, we have been Long covering awaited. this for last one or two weeks. So, uh, uh, you know, if, if you're chasing it now, uh, you'll be taking a risk. Uh, also on Bharti, you've seen the rally from, uh, you know, 370 to 406. Uh, uh, of course, there's a bit of a news on TD side as well. Uh, idea also uh, is uh, quite interesting, but uh, yeah. not the best of the sector. So uh, just keep that. Uh, See, at the Providence, back of uh, Providence, which is a small owner of about four percent, mm. has decided to sell 3.35 percent uh, of its shareholding for cash. And Idea Group has decided to sell uh, its full 11.15 percent shareholding in Dust Towers for cash. So uh, I think a lot of the selling is happening. But uh, we'll do one thing. We'll leave Nisha to uh, just look at the press release in detail. Uh, it's the uh, Bharti Airtel share today is also going to be positive because of the TD Sat staying the try uh, predatory pricing yeah. order. Mm. So we will not be able to get a very clean idea of the impact. Uh, we'll allow our experts to just uh, digest uh, this news. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, uh, let's get to is Rima also with us. Okay, Rima, uh, anything more you can add? Uh, well, this will, uh, you know, this uh, combined entity will, of course, be the largest tower company in India. Its total towers will be 163,000, much more than ATC. I don't remember the exact count of American tower company, but it could be less than even 100,000. There shouldn't be any competition issues in this because as of now, Bharti Infratel as well as Indus uh, operate in different uh, markets in India. So they will have a pan-India presence, but uh, they have, uh, they operate in different uh, areas, so there shouldn't be any issue of 
uh, any competition issue. Apart from that, so therefore that raises the question of the kind of synergies uh, they can eke out because they're operating in different um, geographies. Um, the other point that I'd like to make is that with this, Bharti is taking the combined entities likely to go below 50%. You cannot rule out the fact that Bharti, in order to raise some cash, because with this transaction, Bharti Airtel, with its debt of close to 1 lakh crore rupees, is not going to get any cash. And remember, their plan was always to monetize Bharti Infratel. So it's quite likely that after this, after combining these two, uh, you know, Infratel as well as Indus, they create a giant, and then Bharti will look at selling their stake to an external investor. Idea is cashed out completely. No, that's the point uh, even Nisha was making, that KKR was always yeah. interested and they were looking for annuity earnings and uh, Bharti would, was interested in monetizing. So probably this deal is just the first step. A precursor step. to uh, what we will hear you know, from Bharti selling. Idea is completely cashed out. Vodafone continues to stay invested. Okay, we'll do one thing, uh, uh, Reema. We'll allow you and the analysts and Nisha to read the press release in detail. Uh, this is going to have a minor impact on Bharti Airtel for now. And uh, uh, before long, we are going to get you a lot of experts to discuss uh, Bharti for a whole host of reasons. Mm. Their yeah. results and uh, the telecom, uh, the, the TDSAT ruling as well. Uh, that's an important news. We will come back to it uh, in detail. But for now, we are back to the 3% discussion. Uh, bond yields in the US touching 3%. What does it mean for emerging market equities? We have someone who has long watched this market, Adrian Moat, the emerging market. Market, uh, 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 veteran joins us on the phone line. Uh, good morning, Adrian, and thank you very much for making this unscheduled stop. Uh, uh, as emerging market investors, uh, should we worry at all about 3%? Uh, we have dwelt over 2.99 uh, for a good two weeks, so why should we worry about 3%? I, I don't think we should specifically worry about 3%, although, you know, you do often get these, these big figures, you know, psychological levels. Uh, what we need to do is just stand back and understand what is going on here. So the, the U.S. economy is strong, uh, the labor market is tight, and the Federal Reserve is increasing rates. Uh, and it's quite likely that rates could be, you know, two to two and a quarter percent by the end of this year. Um, you know, a normal yield curve would average about one and a quarter between three and ten years. Okay. Uh, so, you know, U.S. bond yields finishing the year uh, somewhere between mm. three and four percent mm. would be normal uh, versus pre-GFC history. Okay. Now, as discount rates move higher, you will have some impact on equity valuation. And you were noting earlier uh, how the fangs corrected uh, more sharply overnight. Mm. Um, and for stocks that are highly valued, growth stocks, mm. discount rates are important. So I think we, we've gone from, you know, the, the, probably the most favorable environment you could have for capital markets in 2017, uh, which was low interest rates and forecasting strong growth in 2018, to one in which we're having to deal with the valuation that impacts to higher rates. Okay. Uh, I think, I think, yeah, sorry. We're in conversation with Adrian Moat, the emerging equity market strategist. Uh, Adrian, uh, you know, you were telling us about your view on the US 10 year yield, but the traditional thinking is that higher yields make bonds more attractive and people rotate out of equities and into fixed income. Do you think this time could be the same or are things different? No, I, I definitely think um, that trend will go on. And it's been an awfully long time uh, that we've had negative real rates. Finally, we're getting positive real rates. And I, I think investors will shift back into bonds. Um, now, uh, the shift, although you have to think about this from a capital perspective as well as the yield perspective, I think U.S. bond yields will continue to drift higher uh, in order to maintain a sort of standard yield curve. So buying bonds today is a mistake because you might make a capital loss. Uh, but at some point, I think you will get a more major allocation into bonds. Uh, now, investors may be happy uh, to buy slightly shorter dated bonds near term. Um, and, you know, with the current inflation rate and short term bond yields like two year bond yields uh, giving you a decent real rate, I definitely think you could see an allocation out of equities into bonds. But for me, it's really a valuation story for equities. Uh, as discount rates move higher, P multiples do need to come down, particularly for these expensive growth stocks. 
Aiden, uh, so good morning. You know, uh, it's interesting you spoke about growth versus value. But what about India, where for last three or four years we have had a massive rally in all the growth stocks, uh, most of them now trading at much above their uh, all-time high valuations. In certain consumption stocks, we are trading at 60, 70 times. Uh, but over the last three or four months, we've also seen growth sector or your value sectors making a bit of a comeback like IT. Uh, so how do you view a market like India from that perspective then? Yeah, look, I, I think for a style bias, you do need to, to be overweight value relative to growth. Um, and, you know, there are some interesting cyclical dynamics going on that are making material stocks look more attractive. Uh, oil prices have moved up. Uh, so that would also help your value bias. Uh, but I, I think India, you know, unfortunately, if you look at India as a market in the perspective of emerging markets, India is very much a growth high-value market, growth high-value index. And I, I think that's why it's struggling relative in 2018, because that's just not the right style to have. Okay, uh, Adrian, uh, uh, therefore, you know, how, how do you think uh, 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 Indian equities might perform? Do you expect them to underperform the global equity markets? And what's your call on global equities itself? Because uh, after all, the yields have risen because growth is so damn good. Yeah, but you see, remember that equities rallied very hard last year, discounting good growth in 2018. And as you look into 2019, I think policy risk is high. Uh, so you have a Federal Reserve that's pushing up interest rates. You'll have a delayed effect on growth of higher rates. You've got a U.S. administration that put in place a very unnecessary fiscal stimulus through the tax cuts. Um, and if you get a change um, in uh, the composition of Capitol Hill, which is probably likely in November, mm -hmm. I think you could go into mm -hmm. a period of fiscal consolidation and a slowing U.S. economy. And then if you add this trade dispute to the, to the uh, whole picture, if you run a bigger fiscal deficit, mm -hmm. if the U.S. government is net uh, dis-saving, mm. then you're going to, by the law of economics, have a big, bigger current account deficit, mm. and you're probably going to have even more friction mm. around trade policy. Okay. Uh, so, and so, so I, th I think equity markets are both having to deal with a higher discount rate mm. and a lower confidence in the outlook for 2019 mm -hmm. and a lower confidence in the policy for 2019. That is not a good environment for making absolute mm. returns out of equities, even if the underlying earnings growth is still quite robust. Okay, that's an interesting one because in India also, Adrian, is there going to be a bit of a policy risk as we head into uh, big state elections later this year and uh, general elections in 2019? And with the stupendous 2018 uh, behind us or, you know, FY18 behind us, uh, you reckon investors have to lower their expectations for this year? Yes, I think you do. And remember, India is also still very sensitive to the oil price. Um, and the percentage gain in the oil price on average from 2017 average to what we're likely to see in 2018 is meaningful. So I think that adds another sort of cyclical headwind uh, to the Indian story, in addition to the policy risk around state elections. And at some point, uh, the government may call a general election early. Okay, yes, that is uh, the common perception. Adrian Moa, thanks so much for joining us and giving us your quick thoughts on uh, what the meaning of this 3% US yield is for our own markets. So there's a bit of concern. There's a view as well that in the very near term, people could shift out of equities and into bonds. But let's talk about our own markets and the kind of stocks that you need to focus on. Our research team is here to give you that very list. So let's uh, start off quickly. Uh, Anuj, what are you looking at? So two non-index large caps, Sonia versus United Spirits, a classical reversal from 200-day moving average after a brutal correction. I mean, almost something similar to what you saw with Jubilant Food Work. Uh, now, this stock has gained 14% this month, within 10% of life high. And uh, after one bad result, you saw that big correction from 4,000 to 3,000. And now that stock has um, reclaimed more than 50% of lost ground. Uh, the other one, and you know, yesterday I pointed out uh, Biocon, uh, Sonia, among stocks to watch. Uh, Cadilla Healthcare, uh, 
the stock is a bit technical in nature. If you draw the technical chart of the stock, uh, it's made a bit of a 45 degree move from the 20 day moving average, uh, which normally is a bullish indicator. Again, stock has corrected significant jump in delivery volume. So I want, would want to see if there's any follow through buying in this one today because pharma looks like is making a bit of a comeback yes. now. Yes, uh, there is a tailwind behind yeah. pharma for sure after IT. Uh, but uh, I think today everybody will be watching Bharti. Not necessary that the stock has to rally. First the numbers, then the TD sat ruling and now the infratil news. Uh, Reema, tell us first about the results. Uh, well, on the whole, slightly better than what the street was anticipating. Well, they managed to report a profit this time of 83 crore versus estimates of a loss. The consolidated margins too are looking better than expectation, but that's on account of the Africa beat. The India wireless business at the EBIT level has reported a loss of 482 crore. But if you even dig deeper, the financial stress is quite visible. So they've uh, one is an EBIT loss, but even the EBITDA margins have fallen by 420 basis points quarter on quarter to sub 30 percent. The average revenue per user has fallen by 6% sequentially. But all that pain is um, gain in the form of the other subscriber or volume growth. So those metrics are looking quite good. But on the whole, I'll go with green for Bharti Airtel today. Okay, let's see how Bharti Airtel reacts today. But, but uh, overall, real estate, uh, they say it's the best in class company in real estate and uh, best in class earnings as well looks like. Yes, uh, Sonal in fact is going to tell us more on that, mm -hmm. Sonal. Uh, well, I would say that I expect the stock to be in red today. Why? Why? Because it has already rallied 10% in last two days and also because the numbers are largely in line. So if we talk about the margins, they came in at 53.1% versus an expectation of 52.6%. Profits came in at around 142 crores versus an expectation of 110 crores. But that was largely in line in price. And also in terms of sales value, it went down 23% year on year at 263 crores. And the order book, that stands at around 5,360 crores versus 5,000 last year. But on the the whole the uh, the numbers were in line all oh, right thank you very much for that so well uh, in line numbers uh, maybe even good uh, abhishek idfc bank well lata to begin with this baby bank has reported a divergence of 271 crore on their fi 17 book so that means 0.55 percent of the then loan book has been reported as divergence divergence is the difference in gross npa as assessed by rbi and as assessed by the bank so pressure is seen in the pnl as ni has declined both yoy and quarter on quarter despite the fact that loan growth has been there both yoy and quarter on quarter so they have reported a loss at pb level of around 186 crore and that is on account of higher provisions made during the quarter. So tax write back has actually aided in earnings being in black for the bank. Gross NP has declined to 3.31 versus 5.62 and that is because they have sold on NPS during the current quarter. Expect a red tick on the stock today. Sure. Okay. And now it's time to get more IT results especially like persistent uh, uh, Reema. Uh, well, persistent, uh, it's a weak quarter, but in line with what the management had already guided. So their dollar revenue has fallen by 4.6%. Profits have fallen by 20%. Remember, persistent had already given a profit warning where they had said that the IP revenues will see a sharp fall, and that has played out. So the IP revenues have seen a 20% fall. Uh, but the conference uh, call that took place yesterday was more positive, where they indicated that the IP revenues decline was a one-off, and F519 revenues will look better than F518. So it's a weak quarter but largely in line with what the street and the management had guided for. Can what you about run us through uh, Zensor and the others as well? Uh, Zensor, mixed quarter. Margins are weaker than uh, expectations at 12.2%. But on the back of a higher other income, there is a profit growth of 20%. The street likes the digital portfolio of Zensar, which now stands at 40% of its overall revenues. In fact, 84% of the company's F518 revenues came in from digital. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Another good set of numbers this quarter coming in from Raymond. Mangalam, over to you. Absolutely, Sonia. So, good set of numbers coming in, strong commentary by the management, and more importantly, everything, everyone always uh, is wondering about the, the Raymond land uh, business and that is something that the management also commented upon so just keep an eye out on the numbers 1630 crores uh, of revenue versus the street expectations of 1665 a tad bit below estimates but the EBITDA margins as well as the net profit more than make up for that and if one had concerns over revenue growth the management has assaulted that by saying that they expect mid-teen revenue growth in the first quarter of FI19 now to the land business the board has approved development of 20 acres of land in the uh, uh, for residential purposes so watch out for that with the caveat that the stock is up 20% this month. The promoter has been hiking stake in the company. So we'll watch out for how Raymond performs in trade today. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, Nisha, very quickly, another day, another Fortis bid. 
Oh, yes. And uh, the revision coming in from TPG Manipal could be very compelling because it has an open offer component for the hospital business, for the public shareholders, and takes care of the crash crunch as well. Apart from that, remember, KKR backed Radiance as well as IHH have also given their binding offers, and Munjal and Barman are already in the race. Today, the advisory panel is set to meet Lada. Okay, uh, Nisha, thanks a lot for that. Uh, well, uh, let's move on. Uh, what about uh, uh, telcos now, Reema? Uh, yesterday, the TD SAT has given an interim relief on the TREI order. So the TREI order had penalized the operators for giving segmented offers, which basically means that as a Bharti operator, I could have you know, selected Anuj and said that you know, I want to retain Anuj, I'm going to give you XYZ offer. But that same offer will not be available for say Lata as well as Sonia. So now uh, the TREI said that you know, we will ask for those details, but you, uh, the TD SAT has said that the TREI can ask for those details but cannot penalize the operators for providing these select so-called discriminatory offers to its customers but more importantly the REI had changed the definition of a significant market player they changed the definition in such a way that it was deemed to be beneficial for Bharti uh, uh, beneficial for Jio and against incumbent players like idea Vodafone and uh, uh, idea Vodafone and Bharti so there has been a stay on that as well so big relief coming in for the telcos especially on the sentiment Okay, thanks for explaining that to us. Uh, Sonal, what about uh, some more stocks that are in the news this morning? Uh, well, I'll start with MTNL. That will be in focus because the CMD said that the company's revival plan is on cards and there is internal panel of telecom department meeting on a regular basis to discuss revival options. So expect that stock to be in green. GMR also has some positive news as there is a positive ruling by the Appellate Tribunal because they say that the refundable security deposit, the cost of refundable security deposit cannot be denied to GMR and should be paid to them from the next period. And the calculation of ROE should be done in a scientific manner. So expect a green on that stock as well. Now some earnings. DCM Shriram came up with a weak set of numbers. The margins came in at 5.4% versus 13.7% last quarter. And also the weak numbers are led by revenue degrowth in the sugar and bio seed business. In fact, sugar business reported an EBIT loss this year versus a profit last year. Supreme Petro Petrochem, another weak set of numbers. The EBITDA was down 40% at 68 crores. Even the profits came in lower by 41% at 41 crores. Expect these two stocks to be in red today. Okay, thanks uh, Sonal for all of that. So we have plenty of stocks to talk about today. Here's a quick recap in case you missed out on any. Stocks expected to gain United Spirits, Cadilla, Bharti Airtel, you have Idea Cellular, Zensar Tech, Fortis, Raymond, MTNL and GMR Infra. While stocks that could be under pressure today, um, Obera Realty, IDFC Bank, Persistent Systems, Tejas Networks, DCM Sriram and Supreme Petrochem.